it's time for Drawing Power. Hey! Drawing Power, Drawing Power, Drawing Starring Bob Caliban. Drawing Power. Yeah. Carrie Page. And Lenny Schultz. What's so good about it? Well, for one thing, I discovered this outfit I got for riding my bike in the rain really works. I mean, it really keeps me dry. Don't you think it's neat? Carrie, if I was trying to think of a word that describes how you look in that ridiculous getup, neat would not scream to my lips. I see you made some coffee. Yeah, that's right. Of course, in my day, it was the women who made the coffee in the office. In your day, Pop. The women made the coffee while the men went hunting dinosaurs. Boy, are you in a bad mood. What's the matter, Pa? I hate it when it rains. That's what's the matter. Look what happened. My umbrella blew inside out. Looks like a bat that collided with a jet plane. I stepped in a puddle, and I'm sure that I'm going to come down with... <clears throat> oh. And you can bet Lenny's going to blame this weather on being late again. Look. Nine o'clock already. Oh, raindrops keep falling on my head. La ra ra dee da ra 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 ra. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Pop. House trick. Lenny, what is that thing on your chicken's head? It's an umbrella. It's very important for chickens to have umbrellas on them because you know nobody likes watery eggs. <laughs> and 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 there's nothing madder than a wet hen. <laughs> Oh, I know something madder than a wet hen. Oh, yeah? What's that? A mad pop. Boy, is he in a bad mood today. I am not in a bad mood today! Pop, how can you say that? Just look at yourself. Yeah, let's have an instant replay on that one. Welcome to Super Person U, the animated university of the air whose hallowed halls are dedicated to graduating the new breed of got-it-together super-persons who hardly ever beat people up. <laughs> this week's supergraduate, Instant Replay! This week's supergraduate, Instant Replay! It gives me great pleasure to introduce the only super person at Super Person U with fine tuning and horizontal hold. <laughs> Instant Replay! How many times have you said to yourself, Darn, where did I go wrong? Well, folks. Excuse me, sir, but if you'll check out this Instant Replay. I think you will agree that your speech would be more effective if you were facing the audience. What? Uh, oh, uh, thank you, Replay. Uh, now, as I was saying, how many times have you said to yourself, Don, where did I go wrong? Well, folks, Replay here will show you instantly, thanks to his 17-inch screen, uh, measured diagonally, Instant Replay lets you replay life's little mistakes. As a freshman, shortly after arriving at Super Person U, Instant Replay was crossing campus when he ran into some fellow students who had just failed their history exam. Darn, I got an F on the exam. Me too. I don't know what I did wrong. Excuse me, friends, but perhaps my Instant Replay will show you why you did so poorly on the exam. What? Here's what you were doing yesterday. Holy mackerel, Replay, if I'd spent all that time studying instead of goofing around, I'd have gotten an A easy. Me too! Right. Next time you can use your time more wisely. 
Instant Replay continued to show people where they had gone wrong in his sophomore year. Like the time he visited his accident-prone roommate, Daredevil, in the hospital. I don't know what went wrong. I was just... Perhaps this Instant Replay will show you, Daredevil. This replay seems to indicate that you were showing off for that good-looking girl. Not only were you up to your dangerous Daredevil tricks, but because you were showing off, you got carried away and... Thanks, Instant Replay. I'll try not to show off next time. I don't know what's wrong. I handed in my assignment on time. Watch this, Biff. The teacher asked for a book report. You brought in a current event. You weren't paying attention. Golly, you're right, Instant Replay. If I had been listening and had written down the assignment, I wouldn't have made such a dumb mistake. And finally, in his senior year, Instant Replay had his most challenging replay assignment. A chain of events in the school cafeteria. Hey, what the... If you check out this replay, I think you'll see why you got seconds today. You're not allowed any... Slips in the super person business, Robbie. By littering, you caused the downfall of several fellow students. And, in turn, became the victim of your own peel. Thanks, Instant Replay. I've dropped my last litter. And so, Instant Replay's uncanny ability to really show people where they went wrong has earned him this distinguished degree from Super Person U. Excuse me, Replay, but do you think I could see last year's Super Bowl just one more time? Hmm? In life. And referee signals, too. What kind of signals? Oh, like... Loud music playing. Get off the bus. Hey, that was good. I got, I got one, too. Watch this one. Blitty, what is that? That's, hey, 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 you with the galoshes. Get out of the pool. Oh, I have one. I have one. <laughs> oh, I know, no, no, I know. Stop smoking or it'll kill you. Right. I got one. <laughs> I don't Ooh, get it. What is that? that? Stop goofing around and get back to work! <laughs> it's a wacky world! <laughs> The Great Wall of China took 1,500 years to build. It protected China against invaders from the north and west. Now China is threatened by another invasion from the west. Souvenir hunting tourists. It makes you wonder, if it took 1,500 years to build the wall, how long will it take them to unbuild it? It's a wacky world. Boy, that was close. Oh, not really. It was about four miles away. How do you know that, Pop? My golly, don't they teach you kids anything in school? Come here. Now, you know that light travels faster than sound, don't you? Yeah. All right. Now, when you see a lightning flash, you start counting seconds. Start! One and the number of seconds you count before you hear the Three sound of thunder about the number of miles away that the lightning struck. It's three miles away. Well, you got it. Hey, has Lenny missed this fish yet? Let's find out. <clears throat> Gee, Pop, you think it's going to flood? Well, if it does, Lenny's ready. <clears throat> How's everything going with your ark, Lenny? Oh, I know. Gotta get you, too. Nice friends of mine. And here's a little for Goldie, huh? Hey, what happened to Goldie? Maybe she went for a swim, Lenny. Uh, oh, she's probably out in the she rain, went, Lenny. Uh, for a swim? No. I wonder where she would be. Goldfish. Let's see. Where, where, are are you, where are you, fishy? Where are you, fishy? Call her, Lenny. Uh, you wouldn't uh, happen to know where she was, uh, would you? Nah, uh, you wouldn't know. Uh, but, uh... <clears throat> I have a sneaking suspicion that uh, maybe 
Uh, one of you guys ate her. Ate her? Oh, mm -hmm. I haven't swallowed a goldfish since my college days. You know, 23 skidoo and oh, all that. No, 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 and no, my don't lips me, don't are kiss me. sealed. Go ahead, you mugs. Now, Give me the toy degree. I'm no squealer. You're no stool oh, pigeon. I'm no stool on. fish. Who <laughs> what, do you her? want us to tattle? Who took her? You know tattletales are big turkeys. Yeah, like Willie Tell. Right. Hey, what's going on here? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Professor Rutabaga, and I'm here today with an amazing demonstration concerning the way many of us eat our meals. I'm talking, of course, about past the salt. Now, I'm going to ask you to take one or two steps forward. Your bodies will naturally follow. And watch closely as I demonstrate. First, your mom sets a well-balanced plate of tasty food before you. Then I ask you, do we take a bite? Do we sample her delectable dinner? No, we turn to her and say, pass the salt. And cover mom's delicious cooking with a blizzard of sodium chloride and that's all. By golly, someone asked, is your mom a good cook? And you have to answer, I don't know. It all tastes the same to me. You mean salty. Wait, try this experiment in the privacy of your own home. Take one test bite of everything that's on your plate before you want to pass the salt. Friends, you just might discover some flavor there that doesn't need enhancement. And you may want to turn to your mom and shake her hand instead of her shaker. Welcome to Super Person U, the animated university of the air, whose hallowed halls are dedicated to graduating the new breed of got-it-together super persons who hardly ever beat people up. And now, this week's magna cum super graduate. To the untrained eye, just another mild-mannered shoe salesman from Flint, Michigan. But to the renowned faculty of Super Person U, he's known as the amazing Super Shoes. His achievements began with his first homework assignment, Bullies. Help, this big bully's twisting my arm and it hurts. Excuse me, young man, but I think twisting that feller's arm like that may be hurting him. Buzz off, Jerko. I don't need no shoes, and I ain't hurting him anyway. I doubt that you'd say that if you were in his shoes. Allow me to fit you with a pair of my famous bullies, Brogans. Hey, cool. I can always use another pair of stompers. Ouch, that hurts. Hey, that's not fair. Who oh, against one? Now you know how your victims feel when you twist their arms. How's it feel to be in their shoes? Okay, you win. I get it. I, I learned my lesson. Fine, young man. As your reward, you can keep the shoes free of charge. Hey, thanks, mister. Want to play again, shrimp? Sure, Spike. How about a little basketball? Jump off! Super Shoes rated an A-plus in handling bullies. Next assignment, the class clown. So, class, today we're going to work on conjugating our verbs. Hey, did you hear the one about that? Uh, Please, Spike, will you stop disturbing the class? What class? I don't see no class. This class got no class. <laughs> uh, pardon me, ma'am, but allow me to give you some help with this young show-off. How's that, young man? I can handle him with my Super Shoes. That's interesting, but I'd just as soon give the little bummer the boot. You again? Uh, how about something in a nice loafer? You won't be doing any loafing once I put you in your teacher's shoe, Spike. <laughs> uh, class, please, class, uh, hold it down. This is a classroom, not a gymnasium. Well, Spike, how's it feel to be in your teacher's shoes? Not too hot, uh, Super Shoe. And so Super Shoes chalked up another A+, plus, but he had yet to meet his toughest challenge. Oh, a uh, higher soup. Uh, you want a jawbreaker? I didn't know you had enough money to buy that many jawbreakers, Spike. Yeah, well, I didn't. You see, I only paid Pop for five, but I took ten. Uh, I was wrong. All right, go ahead. Slip me into your magic slippers. Not this time, Spike. This time, I want you to know what it's like to be in your own shoes. A thief's shoes. So, you're the jawbreaker lawbreaker. Wait, wait, hold it. I I'll give them all back. Pop! I wouldn't want to be in your shoes, boy. You're in a peck of trouble. Uh, but then if you were to promise, name it. Uh, this time I've really learned my lesson. I'll sweep out your store for a month if you just ask him to let me go. And so I award you the degree of Doctor of Superheroics. May you continue to teach the heroes of this world the errors of their ways by showing them what it feels like to be in the other guy's shoes. Super!
Charlie was super enough to get the job done and teach Spike a few lessons, wasn't he? You call that a few lessons? Come on up here. Let me show you how to teach a villain a few lessons. I'll show you what the word super is all about. You know, being super is more than just wearing crazy shoes, young man. Someone called super shoes ought to really have some super shoes. Like these size 30s. Well, then he can stomp on those bad guys and step on some toes and crush those creeps in one giant step. <laughs> That'll teach those bullies a lesson. Yeah, Pop, but then you'd make super shoes as big a bully as the bully himself. Well, I guess you could look at it that way. Right, Pop, you gotta put yourself in the other guy's shoes once in a while. Well, maybe so, but you know, it's a wacky world when the younger generation can't appreciate a power as that. Pop, I'll bet you don't go around zapping and powing all the characters in all the cartoons you draw. Well, maybe not all of them. Don't worry, Goldie, we'll get you out soon. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi... Why are you counting? Oh, Lenny, I lost my place. Pop says if you count the seconds between thunder and lightning, you can tell how far away the storm is. Really? I have to try that. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi... See you later, Goldie. It's, we gotta eat. Don't forget, you only have a half hour. Hey, Carrie, I got two apples. I can't eat two apples. Do you have anything in that bag that's interesting Yeah, you want to trade? Yeah, buttermilk. Buttermilk? Whoa. What's the matter with Lenny? Has he been looking in the mirror again? I think he's trying to tell me he doesn't like buttermilk. Uh, buttermilk, I love it. Uh, could I have some, please? Sure, Pop. Oh, I've loved buttermilk since I grew up on a dairy farm in Wisconsin. 101 Mississippi, 102 Mississippi, 103 Mississippi... Relax, Carrie. It's cleared up outside. That storm's at least 200 Mississippis away by now. I know, Pop. I was just kidding. Hey, Lenny, how's it coming? Fine, fine. I got Goldie back in a bowl and I almost got this cooler refilled. Who did this to you, Goldie? Was it... Pop? Was it Carrie? Oh, forget that, Lenny. It was just a little joke. <laughs> oh, but outside now, there's sunshine and, and blue skies and rainbows. <laughs> oh, the best part of that is I won't get soaked on the way home. And I don't have to wear my rain outfit. Come on, Lenny, it stopped raining. We can go home now and not get wet. Okay, Carrie, I'll be right there. It's time for Turkey of the Week, a chance to get to know and possibly even to dislike a really rotten kid. And now the presentation of the most unwanted award on television, The Golden Gobbler to this week's Turkey of the Week, a turkey named Francis X. Adjuration. Here's a girl with a vivid imagination. Meet Francis Xavier Adjuration, or Francis X. Adjuration for short, since blowing things up was her favorite sport. You couldn't call Francis a liar exactly, and yet she would tell you, quite matter-of-factly, that her uncle the Duke was fantastically rich, and his wife, a Francis aunt, was a practicing witch. Because a broom was their method of transportation when she stayed with them during summer vacation. And when people stopped listening, because nobody knew if any or all of her stories were true, she'd go further than simple exaggeration to a fantasy world of her own creation. When she went to the circus, the lions broke out and ate all the clowns. That was open to doubt. She had 600 cats and a pet kangaroo in her room back at home. Now, that was simply not true. Behind the wheel of every car, Francis saw a movie star. To Francis, a weed was a begonia. If she had a cold, it was double pneumonia. Her homework caught fire. There were Martians in school. Yesterday at the Y, there were sharks in the pool. She lived in a castle. She lived in a tent until... No one believed her wherever she went. They 
didn't dislike her, just left her alone to live where she liked in a world of her own. But in her own world, things went the same way. For instance, outside in the schoolyard one day, someone threw her a softball. Hey, Francis, here, catch. Then Francis imagined a fabulous snatch, the most marvelous catch made by anyone ever. Artistic, athletic, courageous, and clever. Greatest catch of the year, all the newspapers said. The softball, meanwhile, hit her right in the head. Uh, sorry, Francis, they said, and went on with their game. But Francis imagined a lifetime of shame. Misaggeration? I'm afraid it's a rule. Softball missers can't get into medical school. Now the headline screamed, dropper of softball is chased out of town, butterfingered girl athlete disgraced. She was sad in her make-believe world, and the chances are nobody knew it, except maybe Frances, and she didn't know how to make the thing stop. And then Frances got lucky. One day she met Pop. Hey, that's me. Right, Pop. Now you can guess who Francis really is. Pop made up outrageous stories with features like I'm talking rock, rocks rock. and purple creatures. But Pop and the people who watched him knew what parts were for fun and which were true. He said, Francis Xavier adjuration, the overactive imagination which got you into this situation could be very useful in moderation. Would you like a career in animation? Because making up stories is all very well if you really do have some truth to tell. Well, some things are better said simple and true, like, I like you for being you. Then he gave her a job in his funny old shop where she still makes up stories and draws them for pop. And they call them cartoons, and they're shown on TV. And Francis is happy. Because Francis... Is me! Francis is you! No! Carrie, you're no turkey of the week anymore! You certainly are! We're happy to have you with us! Francis and Adoration! I love it! for Drawing Power. Hey! Drawing Power, Drawing Power, drawing Starring power, Bob Caliban. Drawing Power. Yeah. Carrie Page. And Lenny Schultz. This was my animation studio. Good morning, Pop. How are you? What's the matter? Carrie? Is that you? Of course it's me. Well, I didn't recognize you in this creature from outer space costume. Oh, come on, Pop. Don't you think this is a dynamite outfit? Yeah, it looks like something you were wearing when you were playing with dynamite. Well, I bet Lenny likes it anyway. 
Whoops! Ooh, ooh. Excuse me, I, I thought this was an animation studio. Lenny, you <laughs> cut that out. Personally, I think I look pretty flash. Did you know that clothes could be one way of expressing yourself? Really? Is that true? Yes. The problem with you two is that you have no sense of style. Style? You mean to tell me everybody's dressing like this these days? Not fashion pop, style. Fashion is dressing the same as everyone else. Style is dressing differently, dressing like yourself. Really? Well, I must admit, Carrie, that outfit there sure is different. Different? <laughs> That's the understatement of the year. I'll say it's different. And what, may I ask, is wrong with being different? Come over here, you two. I have an episode of Super Person You that I think you two ought to watch. Well, I hope this week we've at least got a superhero who bashes a few bad guys once in a while. Pow! Not superhero, Pop. Super Person, remember? Shh! What? Welcome to Super Person U, the animated university of the air, whose hallowed halls are dedicated to graduating the new breed of got-it-together super persons who hardly ever beat people up. <laughs> And now, this week's magna cum super graduate, a super person with a difference, Mr. Different. The first thing different people notice about Mr. Different is that he's, well, different. And although he often differed with his different professors while studying different subjects here at Super Person University, we all agreed that he is a successful graduate uh, with a difference. For example, he is a master of different appearances, as he demonstrated on a class trip to the park. Hey, Bean Paul, how's the weather up there? Shut up, short stuff, and give me the ball. He showed a short kid how it feels to be tall, and a tall kid how it feels to be short. What's, What's happening, man? You know what I can't stand? What's that? People who dress like that. He wanted a couple of girls to see how it feels to be dressed differently. Feeding the pigeons? They must be stool pigeons. Stoolies. He made a young wise guy older and a nice old lady younger. Hey, Baldy! Showed how it feels to be bald. Watch it for us. To wear glasses. Hey, Eagle Beak! To have a big nose. Hey, Brace Face! Or wear braces. Thank you, my different friends, for helping me with my somewhat different experiment. Now tell me, do you feel any different? Well, things look a little different from down here. Funny, even from up here, I really don't feel that much different. I still feel like me. I still feel like me, too. I'm like you. I'm just me. Okay, okay Farah, just fine. Mercy, being a kid still feels the same. <laughs> so my conclusion, Professor, is that it's okay to be different on the outside because it's who you are on the inside that really counts. Oh, yes, I and see. no matter how different we look or act from one another on the outside, way down deep inside, we're all pretty much the same. Congratulations, Mr. Different. And tell me, what are your plans for the future? I'd just as soon stay different, if it's all the same. Not bad, Carrie, not bad. Very nice. I, I didn't get it. What? what? I mean, I didn't get it. If everybody's the same, then nobody's different. And if nobody's different, then everybody's the same. And if everyone's the same and nobody's different... Well, does that make me the same or different? You, Lenny, are very different. But it's okay to be different. How am I different? Very few people I know have a pet chicken. And even fewer talk to their pet chickens. But I also have a pet rabbit, don't I? Uh, you see, Lenny, most people have pet uh, cats and dogs. Oh, I love dogs. <laughs> and you ought to see the next episode of Wacky World. It's about a dog. It's about a dog who's very different. Wacky World! <laughs> A dog in North Carolina made the papers recently. Seems like he'd wait around till midnight or so, trot up on a neighbor's porch, and ring the doorbell. 
folks knew it wasn't the Avon lady, so the police came and made the collar. You gotta be pretty silly to go around ringing people's doorbells for no reason. <laughs> it's a wacky world. Pop, don't you like my pet rabbit? Huh? Yeah, uh, sure, he's a, he's a fine rabbit. Yeah, but do you really like him? Yeah, I love him. He's a great rabbit. Then can he have your carrot? No. Why? Because I'm drawing carrots. But bunnies love carrots. Well, it just so happens that I love... I love carrots, too. Besides, they're good for me. They are? Well, sure. But just ask Professor Rutabaga here. Hey, Professor Rutabaga, what about carrots? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Professor Rutabaga, and I'm here to tell you uh, about one of the roots of Western civilization. Yes, I'm talking about your basic carrot. A rich orange in color, your carrot is crowned with a leafy green. This part here grows beneath nature's own soil, stirring up vitamins E, B, and C. Put those three letters together and they spell... Uh, now you might well ask, how in the world a carrot tastes? Well, to get the answer to that question, wait a minute. Go to the track and offer a nice fresh carrot to a horse. He'll thank you for it the longest day you live. And I ask you, friends, have you ever seen a horse wearing glasses? Of course you haven't. And one reason is that carrots contain carotene, nature's own secret ingredient for your eyes. Carrots come canned. They come frozen. Say, next time you're looking for a tasty snack, check your fridge for a crunchy carrot and show yourself to good health and happiness every single day of your life. Carrie, did you take my lime green felt pen? Carrie? Lenny, where is she? Huh? Where's who? A oh, dang nabbit, who do you think? Oh, where did that girl go to now? Oh, we've got work to do. Uh, these young folks today, no sense of responsibility, just taken off, and with my lime green felt pen. Uh, where is it? Ah, oh, I think she said something about going shopping. My green felt pen went shopping? Ta-da! I got to thinking what low-style, no-style people you are, so I went out and I bought some threads. Something to help you express yourself, something with color and life. Lenny, this scarf is absolutely you. This scarf is me? Why, uh, hi, Lenny. Hi, uh, nice to meet you. I, I, I don't think I ever... Poppy, you look terrific! I look like a nut. You look like a nut. You, you don't look like a nut. You, you look like Lenny. You look like me. You know what I think? I think you have to brush your teeth. That's what I think you have to do. Yes. Yes, I do. Now, does that feel better? There are lots of people in our town who aren't just like us. And today we'll tour their neighborhood by animated bus. Bus stops, gee, how different other parts of town can be. Bus stops, underneath, the folks are just like you and me. Bus stops, 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 bus stops. Welcome to Ephrata, Pennsylvania, and the land of the Amish. Amish? What's Amish? Not what's Amish, who's Amish. Okay, who's Amish? The Amish are people who live here around Ephrata. They belong to a church started back in the 17th century by a man named Jacob Amon. Hey, driver, why are we slowing down? Look up ahead. What's that? They making a movie? No, that's a genuine Amish horse and buggy. Why don't they drive cars like everybody else? Well, they don't believe that life has to be complicated or modern to be good. So they still drive horses the way they did when they settled here 200 years ago. Yeah, I think that's stupid. Not stupid, Spike, just different. Oh, the engine's overheated. We'll have to stop till it cools. Oh. Oh. Now, do you think a horse and buggy is so stupid? There they go, and here we stay. And here comes some more. Now you can see why the Amish are called the plain people. All the men and boys wear those same hats and those same plain coats. And look how plain the women dress. No beads, no jewelry. Good morning, Morgan. My name is Sam. Your bus is kerfloppin'. 
No, not good flopping. Just too hot to trot. <laughs> That's good. Hey, Sammy, where's everybody going? Over to Byler's farm. His barn burned down. Now all his friends and neighbors, a new one, are going to build him. You should come see. Ah, wouldn't you rather stay home and watch TV? My family does not watch TV. No TV? We do not have electricity. No electricity? That means you've got no lights. We do not need all that. We go to bed when it gets dark and we get up when it gets light. It is the Amish way. Well, I must to the barn raising be going. Why don't you come too? Yeah, hey, see you. Well, see you bye. 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 Boy, what a joke. Did you dig his crazy clothes? I mean, that hat, that kooky coat. And did you hear the way he talked? What a weirdo. Get him. Talk about weird. Well, nobody ever accused Spike of being one of the plain people. <laughs> 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 yeah, but no kidding. Do all the Amish talk that way? No, not everywhere. Most Amish people speak just like we do. But in this part of Pennsylvania, lots of folks are of German descent. And their English is influenced by the way their parents and grandparents form their sentences in German. Hey, driver, can we go to that barn raising? Sure thing, Spike. Hi. Oh, hi. 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 You're just in time to see the wall going up. Watch this. Ein, zwei, drei. time for dinner, okay? My mama wants you to eat with us. Welcome to our table. We have beef and ham and pork and noodles and beans and potatoes and potato salad and pickles and cheeses and apple butter and coleslaw and six kinds of pie and seven kinds wow, of... Wow! Did you make all this? <sighs> no. We all dinner make. The men build the barn and we... We build the men! <laughs> ah, yeah. Lord, bless this food. Now, you must all reach out and eat. Mm. Oh, this is, oh, this is good. good. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks, good. Oh. And now, back to the barn we must go. Well, sir, we'd sure like to thank you for the great meal. That was some spread. And for letting us watch you raise a barn. Yeah, you know, for plain people, you guys really know how to raise the roof. Do all your people talk that way? Goodbye! Bye! Bye! talks. He sounds so cool. Really? I like the way Spike sounds. Hey, that's the way I think people ought to talk all the time. But that's how it is. People talking differently all over the country. Isn't that true, Pop? You betcha. I'll show you. Yep. Uh, people up there in uh, New England talk like this. Yep. Uh, oh, well, uh, so Southerners have what you might call a Southern draw, my honey. <laughs> Well, of course, uh, them uh, sidekicks in the Western movies <laughs> all talk like this, you little whippersnapper. And, of course, uh, all the kids in California, like, uh, like uh, they talk uh, like this, huh? What do you think of that, Carrie? <laughs> but I like that. People looking different, talking different. Oh, I don't know. We robots all sound alike, and no one seems to mind. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 Okay, Pop, I think I finally got this Wacky World soundtrack synchronized with the pictures. That's nice, Carrie. Does it help? Hey, Carrie, I think I figured out how to wear this thing you gave me. Honestly, Lenny, someday somebody's going to do a Wacky World episode about you. Don't bite me, I told you, don't bite me. It's a wacky world. <laughs> there were these firemen in Virginia who just gotten a new machine. One of those gadgets that cuts open wrecked cars. Well, they were having a great time trying it out till they realized they were cutting open the chief's car. 
Was he burned up? They should have remembered, you gotta read the instructions before you play with a new toy. It's a wacky world. What's the matter, Carrie? Pop hates the hat I gave him. How do you know? He won't even wear it. Well, maybe he's shy. Maybe he doesn't want to wear it in front of us. Shy? Oh, pow, pam, zing, pop. He's about as shy as a, a rhinoceros. How do you know what strinos are in charge? Oh, Lenny. <laughs> what do you do, Dad? What do you do, Mom? What do you do when you go out and do what you do? When I get old enough to work like you, how do I know what you got to go through when you do what you do, what you do, what you do, what you do? What do you do, Dad? What do you do, Mom? What do you do, Dad? What do you do, Mom? What do you do? Cousin Spike is here. Welcome to our dairy farm, Spike. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Give me five, give me five. It's a dairy farm, huh? Yeah, well, I'll help you plant a few dairies. <laughs> Spike, a dairy farm doesn't grow dairies. It's where milk comes from. Come on, don't kid me. Milk comes from a supermarket. You'll see tomorrow, Spike. <sighs> Bedtime. Bedtime? Boy, you know, I knew it'd be quiet here. I miss the city already. Boy, I hope I'm not bored here. Okay, kids, time to get up. Huh? What? Oh, what, are you kidding, huh? It's the middle of the night. Not for the cows. They have to be milked every day, right at the same time. Hey, why don't you watch where you're going? Morning, Spikes. Now here's where milk comes from, these cows. Why, are you kidding? I don't see any milk. See for yourself, Spike. A few years ago, we had to milk each cow by hand, like this. Come on, looks easy. Yeah, let a smart city kid show you how. Hey, hey, what are you, a wise guy or something? Now we have these milking machines that milk better than we can. The machines can milk all the cows at the same time. Yeah, do the milking machines hurt the cows? Here, Spike, put her in her place over there. Oh, we forgot to tell you, Spike. Each cow remembers its own place. City kids aren't the only ones who are smart. The cows eat from this manger. We feed them hay and grass and grain. Hay and grass and grain? Looks awful. Cows are dumb to eat that stuff. Here's where the milk comes in from the cows. And then it comes into a big tank here in the milk house. I'll clean out the barn here at the farm. You can take Spike to see the dairy plant. All set, Jim. Uh, this truck takes our milk to our dairy. Hey, you mean the milk's not ready to drink yet? Hey, you know that uh, truck looks like a big thermos bottle. Well, that's exactly what it is. A 4,000-gallon thermos bottle keeps the milk cold. You own a dairy plant, too? Well, sort of. It's a cooperative plant. Lots of us dairy farmers each own a part of it and share the profits. Well, here we are. I'll pump your milk inside. Now our milk's inside this tank being pasteurized. That means it's being heated to kill the germs. Yeah, boy, you know, I'm getting tired. We've been following this milk around since the middle of the night. <laughs> well, you wanted action. Milk used to be sold in glass bottles, like this one. See the cream at the top? Yeah, I never saw no milk with cream at the top before. Of course not. Today, milk is homogenized, which means it's mixed up so well the cream can't separate. Oh, yeah? How? Well, like this, Mike. <laughs> it's not boring being homogenized, is it? Yeah, thanks, thanks. I'm thoroughly homogenized. Whatever happened to the glass bottles, Dad? Well, these cardboard containers are cheaper. They don't break, and you don't have to bring them back, so they don't have to be washed out like glass, which makes them sanitary, too. Yeah, hey, now, uh, now this is what milk is supposed to look like. You know, Spike, some of this milk might be going to your neighborhood supermarket in the city. Oh, yeah? Really? Uh-huh. Now, just so you won't be bored, we'll get you up at dawn again tomorrow so you can help milk the cows and then clean out the barn, uh, then weigh the milk and feed the uh, cows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Not me. No way. Never. No. Nope. There's too much action here. Now, I'm going to go back to the city. You know what I mean? Back to the city for some peace and quiet.
But don't you like the idea of a cartoon that tells kids what their parents do for a living? Or a cartoon that tells kids what they could be when they grow up? Well, personally, I think everybody should become a hard-working animator. Present company included. Well, I could take a hint. Back to the drawing board. Work, work, work. All you do is around here is work, work, work. Quitting time! Funny how time passes when you're having fun. Come in, Carrie. Oh, I don't know, Lenny. What do you mean? Well, I don't know if I want to be seen in the streets with someone wearing a scarf like that. What's wrong with this scarf? You gave it to me. Oh, Lenny, I'm just kidding. The scarf is nice and you look wonderful. Come on. Okay. Good night, Pop. Yeah. Don't forget the new hat, Pop. Don't forget your new hat, Pop. Uh, some hat. <laughs> you call this a hat? Uh, pow, right in the hat. <laughs> Ridiculous. Well, let's see here. All right, Pilgrim. Hold it right there. <laughs> uh, see this one. Boys and girls of the graduating class. <laughs> oh, poker, sir? I never played that. Uh, is that a card game? <laughs> Dad and Eric, we're moving to Beverly Hills. <laughs> I've lost me, Hortiz, the plank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh.